Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tesla Coil Marketing Insights. Uh, no, just uh, Crypto Marketing Insights. But uh, yeah, in case you're wondering how I do this, this amazing thing here. Tesla coils. Maybe. Or maybe it's just a natural gift from the heavens and keratin, who knows. These are my lockdown locks and that is how they are until they go away. Which may be sooner than I think, but if there's a second lockdown coming in my area, and it looks like there might be then who knows how long they might get. It's my silent cultural commentary. I wear it like an albatross. Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things happening in the world of crypto and marketing right now. Among other things, you may have noticed that there are ads on Facebook suddenly in the US that are blockchain friendly. Although in theory, they're not crypto friendly yet. So there are ads happening for blockchain related products and services on Facebook. As of recently, people have noticed, as we can see. And you can, yeah, of course, links to the articles that are relevant to the discussion are in the thing below, the description area. Basically, <laughs> not to anyone's surprise, as Facebook ventures deeper into the land of Libra and cryptocurrencies and figuring out what to do with the future of that project, it's become quite obvious that a lot of big players uh, at the same time throughout the industry and in different institutions, over time, the interest has grown in crypto and blockchain. And so to block ads that are potentially revenue rewarding in a space that is still perfectly legal in the United States and largely unregulated, seems contrary to their own business interests. So obviously, uh, Facebook, being a forward-looking company, decided that it's in their best interest now to start accepting these blockchain ads. Nice. Again, they're not promoting direct sales of crypto, in theory, yet. Although, that said, a number of the blockchain projects that are advertising somehow have a token associated with them. So make of that what you wish and consider that when you think about the projects being advertised. And also consider the interesting end of the, uh, let's not call it hypocrisy, but saying one thing and then doing another. For years, they said blockchain and crypto ads, you know, they didn't say anything about it. They just let them run. Suddenly, after the all-time highs and the ensuing crash, all of a sudden, alts were this bad thing and ICOs were bad because people lost money in it. Well, yeah, when you have speculative bubbles, people are going to lose money when they pop. Right? People put money into these speculative bubbles, hoping to get rich and a small percentage of them do. But the rest of the people, they're usually left with empty bags, right? Or big heavy bags not worth much. Kind of the same. That's the way speculative bubbles go, and that's why they always say, when you know, whenever you look at one of those videos that talks about investments or trading or whatever, they always tell you, I'm not your financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Why do they say that? Because you're likely to lose money, right? And as, as a marketer, you have to make that very clear to the audience that they're likely to lose money. And so the advertisers that are on Facebook and that are on Google have to obviously make that abundantly clear, right? Um, that if you're investing in something, it, it's not likely to give you the returns you are dreaming of, right? Despite what their advertising and their marketing messaging might say. Nevertheless, <laughs> we are seeing that the platforms that said for many years, nothing and just let the ads run and then suddenly banned them outright because people were losing money, all of a sudden, it's okay again. And you have to wonder yourself, why? How has it just become okay again? Did crypto suddenly evolve into some new thing? No. Is it now 
impossible for anyone to ever try to do anything bad with any kind of crypto? No. Is it uh, the most transparent thing in the universe? No. Like all cryptos? We know blockchain can be very transparent. We know Bitcoin is a public ledger. Yes, but we're not talking about Bitcoin. We're talking about other cryptos that are advertising, right? Bitcoin is not paying for ads, right? But if you want to see some cool ads for Bitcoin produced by the world community, because it is open source, visit bitcoinmarketingdepartment.com. That's bitcoinmarketingdept.com. And enjoy. Give it the old uh, clicks or likes or share it with your friends. You see some cool videos there that you like. But yeah, Bitcoin does not have a paid department on payroll from Bitcoin corporate headquarters or from the Bitcoin management office. You can also check out those sites. Bitcoin is a grassroots organic thing, right? That's the whole point of why it's kind of different from pretty much every other crypto out there. It is really decentralized in the sense that it has no figurehead. Even Litecoin has a figurehead, even though he doesn't theoretically own any Litecoin now, right? Charlie Lee is still the figurehead of Litecoin, right? It has no central management in one location only. It has no central mining in one location only. The whole point is it's a distributed decentralized network. But tons of these other projects on blockchain and crypto are clearly centralized projects and are clearly not <laughs> the promise of Bitcoin, right? They have their own promise and their own vision. Uh, and that's fine and that's wonderful. And it's great that they're advertising. I'm frankly thrilled to see these ads on Facebook again and on Google and wherever else they may pop up, Instagram, and wherever else you may see ads, right? Maybe they'll show up in brave browsers soon um, or more of them. I know there's already, you know, crypto.com is in there a bunch and there's a whole bunch of other crypto ads in brave, but... <laughs> Long term, this is great for Bitcoin. This is great for other cryptos. It's great for Bitcoin, even though Bitcoin doesn't, again, run ads necessarily, right? But why is it great for Bitcoin? Because it brings attention to cryptocurrency. And the number one name is obviously Bitcoin. And most of the ads that promote one token also mention Bitcoin. <laughs> so even though they're not even promoting Bitcoin, even if they're saying we're better than Bitcoin, they're mentioning Bitcoin. So you're getting a lot of free exposure for Bitcoin. Uh, even from detractors, even from competitors who are actually quietly converting their own you know, coins or other coins into Bitcoin, right? Uh, or not even quietly, right? But that's a lot of people just stack sats, right? And so they just do that. This whole movement of putting ads back or this whole shift of putting back ads back on the big platforms is obviously going to have an impact on retail investors and on the general market sentiment towards cryptocurrency and blockchain. Um, even if people don't buy in, even if they just see the ads and they're like, oh, whatever, just another ad, they just click away. The more they see it, the more repetition that they see from different cryptocurrency ads, the more they'll realize, oh wait, this is actually a thing, not just necessarily a bubble that happened and is gone. It's still around, it's back, right? <laughs> for people who haven't seen crypto ads for a couple of years now, they'll suddenly realize it's back or it really never went away, right? <laughs> This has a strong impact potential for the marketing of cryptos because obviously with a market reach the size of Facebook and Google, you are now able to go and get to the market once again. Yes! 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 Oh! Right? Like the whole market, right? Um, but of course you have to be marketing a crypto project or a blockchain project that isn't specifically promoting the cryptocurrency aspect of it or at all, right? You have to be very careful to make sure that the use case you're promoting is a blockchain use case. It doesn't necessarily or at all have to be about transferring money values, right? Or currency values or whatever you want to call them. It doesn't have to be about transferring those values. It could be about tokenizing. It could be about rendering services. It could be uh, different products. It could be games. It could be, you know, applications for certain things. There's no shortage of what you could use, obviously, blockchains for and therefore there's no shortage of projects that can be advertised if you look at just the list of existing projects there's thousands of them so 
if you're one of the people out there who's marketing crypto and blockchain, first of all, hats off to you. And if you're watching this, double hats off to you because very few people <laughs> are into this particular space. It's pretty damn niche. So I salute you for being committed to doing something that apparently nobody else wants to really say, say that they do too much. Uh, or if they do, they prefer to just keep to themselves on LinkedIn and just watch videos quietly. So These are interesting times. These are very good times uh, for crypto marketing, despite the fact that many companies have been shuttered because of COVID-19, COVID-19, which is quite terrible. Uh, and it's impacted tons of companies. It's even impacted my own marketing agency. We've lost a lot of clients uh, thanks to COVID-19 uh, that shuttered a whole bunch of companies that are now gone, right? They couldn't afford to just hang on for months and months and months and pay their salaries of all their employees and pay for their brick and mortar facilities and all the other things that associate with running their businesses and they're just you know many of them are just gone it's very sad and um hopefully things will get better but i don't you know without grand prognostications here things like when advertising starts to come back are usually an indication of the beginning of a bubble or a cycle, a bullish cycle, or a, um, some kind of growth cycle in spending. Now, where would you be spending that money from if all these businesses are suddenly going out of businesses? Well, not all crypto businesses have necessarily gone under during the last few months. Many are still thriving. In fact, the ones that were around a few months ago are more than likely still around today because they don't have the same kind of physical restrictions that a lot of retail businesses have. They don't have to have a centralized office, even if they have a centralized business, they might have employees remotely working on the internet, and that's how they do it. So they don't need to have an office you can walk into, they're just building a crypto, which is just software. So they just have their servers hosted at Amazon or wherever they host it, and you know they run it like that. So that's why a lot of cryptos are still around, even though many brick and mortar businesses have just fizzled. Uh, and also brick and mortar businesses were actually real businesses that had real loans, real debts, real everything else. Try getting them to advertise now when they don't have any revenues coming in. Whereas crypto, all they were and all they are for the most part is just little speculative things. And so all their money go to advertising if it isn't in development, right? And managing their team or whatever. So all of it is about marketing, right? A very healthy chunk of their monies should be about marketing. They want to get the word out because they're not the first mover and they have to therefore differentiate themselves. And one easy way to do that is through advertising. And the way you advertise a crypto project, where you advertise a blockchain project, is very specific. The kind of thing that, you know, marketing agencies do, we specialize in that at our agency. There's plenty of marketing agencies, it's their single niche focus. Running crypto ads is a very particular thing where to run them, what to run, what kind of messaging to put in them. And we're seeing with Facebook opening up their ad platform again to crypto, uh, that you still have to be very, very specifically careful about the things you're running in the ads, much more than a regular product or even a regular financial product because the nature of it is so speculative and they are so wary of allowing these ads to run, even though they're building their own blockchain. And they're obviously going to promote using blockchain in the near future, whenever that is all sorted out. So yeah, I mean, don't be surprised to see a Google chain. Don't be surprised to see a, you know, a PayPal chain or whatever, a Facebook chain. All these huge corporations will have their own chains. It may seem ridiculous. Why will they do it? A lot of them will do it because of opportunity. Some of them will do it because it's actually a practical thing. Some of them will do it for both of those reasons. But don't be surprised to see the enormous giants build out blockchain solutions and then suddenly go from parties that said, no, no, we don't want to touch that stuff to parties that say, yeah, we're all about that. We always have been, right? They're going to false praise themselves into having somehow been OGs of the blockchain space, even though they've been strategically and openly and publicly denouncing it for years now. And even though we know they have been quietly developing things in this space for years now. Uh, so again, not calling them hypocrites, just saying they say one thing and then do another. Make of that what you will. And again, I got nothing against these, against these companies in general. I actually love using their platforms. 
for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is marketing. You know, all my clients, the ones that we had and the ones we still have, they all use these platforms. We use the platforms for them to enhance their exposure, to enhance their presence. Social media is amazing, right? You can't deny that. It's a huge market opportunity. And so you have to capitalize on it regardless of how you feel about it. I think it's irrelevant as a marketer how you feel. I mean, that's, that's the difference maybe between marketers and consumers is if you're really a sharp marketer, not only can you discern between the truth and the not so truth uh, of a particular message quite easily, but also uh, you are not going to simply... Oh, oh, oh God, oh. let your emotions control every movement you make, right? Because you're the one who has to plan the psychology, you're the one who has to plan how your funnels work. For anybody who's not a marketer, yes, this is what marketing is, right? You need to strategically set up funnels, you need to strategically set up conversion rates. Um, it's not to dupe you if it's good marketing, it's actually to provide to you the best possible service for the best possible price. I'll have what she's having. That's what good marketing actually tries to do, right? Like, as a marketer, if I'm selling surfboards and you love surfboards, great. I want to make sure that you love the kind of surfboards I'm selling so that you have an amazing experience buying these surfboards. If you're not that person that wants the surfboards that I sell, I don't want you buying them. Like, just flat out, right? That Any good marketer will tell you that because if you buy something that you're not going to like, the end result is I got paid some amount of profit for an individual sale, but then for the rest of your life, all you're going to have is a bad connotation with the brand. And anytime anybody ever talks about it around you, you're just going to trash talk it. Now, granted, trash talking is better than no talking. Well, that's true when it comes to things like PR and news. It's better to be talked about negatively than not talked about at all. That is, you know, yes, that works great in some cases or in many cases. But in general, you don't want to build your brand based on pissed off customers who have an unhappy experience buying your product, right? You want customers who are happy because customers who are happy will give you positive reviews and positive reviews are worth their weight in gold and then some. They're worth their weight in Bitcoin and Bitcoin doesn't weigh anything. So, yeah, uh, but they're worth their weight in gold and then some because word of mouth and authentic actual reviews from real people, not paid testimonial type you know, things that are clearly paid testimonials, but actual real testimonials from real people. Uh, when people go on their own blog and just write about this thing, or they just, or they just tell their friends in person, or they just <laughs> spam a hundred of their WhatsApp contacts with a link to their affiliate page or whatever, you know, because they, they bought the product and they really love it, that is worth a lot more, right, than the profit of the actual sale, of the individual sale, right? Because it very quickly leads to other sales. So, okay, I'm starting to go a bit off here, but you get my point. This is a very healthy thing for Bitcoin and for crypto in general, as well as for the actual blockchain projects that are being advertised. So yay to Facebook, yay to Google, yay to all the platforms that are changing their minds and suddenly seeing the light of crypto and blockchain again, and that are slowly but surely and you know, starting to allow these projects to go online. Let's hope they don't just suddenly change their mind again, because, you know, this is crypto, this is blockchain, they could easily, just like that, be like, oh, yeah, no, somebody wearing a government badge said we shouldn't allow this and we're not going to allow it anymore, right? And again, don't forget, and this is very important, right? the Fed owns more than 20% of the market at this point, right? Well, well above, especially now that they keep, you know, they're buying all the, the FANG stocks, uh, the FANG bonds, right? and stocks and whatever else. That means that these companies are increasingly owned by the Fed, right? So, and also, literally, Google you know, is invested in by the investment group of what they call the company, right? the CI, or the CIA. They own, through their investment group that's publicly known, a significant chunk of Alphabet, which is the company that owns Google and YouTube. Right? Facebook has, you know, exclusive contracts also, and 
with the government, so does Google, they provide them with unique user interfaces and everything else. So the fact that they're allowing crypto and blockchain ads means essentially you're getting tacit approval through the investment groups of the government, the Fed, to run ads. Now, of course, nobody at the Fed had to go make a phone call and say, hey, Facebook, this is the Fed, we allow you to run ads. No, but it's signaling that it's okay to run these ads on these platforms that are owned by the government in part, right? And that are entirely surveyed by the government in whole, right? So keep that in mind. It means that blockchain and Bitcoin are either a lot less of a pariah than a lot of people think, a lot of you know paranoid libertarians, whom I love, and they're wonderful. And we would not be here with Bitcoin without many of their contributions and with crypto. But the fact that the government is finally coming around and allowing Facebook and Google to run these ads without worrying about repercussions, at least immediately, or at all, that is a signal that the government is on board with growth through blockchain and growth through potentially cryptocurrencies eventually. Although I doubt they'll be crypto friendly until they've sorted out their whole fiat to crypto situation. But at least blockchain projects that allow things like, you know, tagging, tokenization of items and logistical things and maybe insurance and who knows whatever else. Things that the government can easily regulate and control. Hey, they're all for that, right? And that's a very good thing. And there's no other way to look at that. Unless the whole thing is a big plot to throw the whole thing upside down in its head and fool everybody and come out and say, no, this is evil, we're going to shut it all down. But I really doubt they're going to do that. Because they already shut it down. <laughs> so now, just, were they reopening it just to shut it down again? I mean, this crypto is not the corona thing, <laughs> right? It's not. <laughs> just get it out of your head. It's good for a meme, but it's not that, right? The beer bug is not crypto. So it's not like we have to do a lockdown and then open up and lock down everybody again in crypto ad space. That, that's not the metaphor, right? <laughs> this is a business thing. And when the politics has decided, oh, yeah, you can open it up again because we've, we're, we're going to find ways to regulate this and we need you to generate some revenue so that we can do that, that is tacit approval, right? And it may come to the point where it will become legislated approval or at least regulatory approval in the coming months and years as more of this happens and as more projects go go away come online and get bigger and everything else right as as we see more uh, consolidation of the crypto space and the blockchain space we're going to see bigger players evolve emerge whatever we're going to see many little players fizzle away we're going to see a whole bunch of little players also merge together and try to become bigger players they're going to consolidate they're going to put their muscles together and try to you know overtake and also some shiny little superstars will come out of nowhere and do God knows what. So, yeah, that said, pretty much all I want to talk about right now. I'm going to get going. I have tons to do. It is a Thursday, and it is already the 2nd of July. Wow. So, if I don't see you before, have an awesome July 4th weekend. I hope you all have fun out there, taking it easy, enjoying your independence, your freedom, hopefully, if you're in America. And if you're not, well, I hope you're all enjoying it, too. Um, I can't talk. You know, I hope you're enjoying your uh, independence and freedom no matter where you are. And for anybody in America, hey, happy July 4th. Woohoo. Any American out there, happy Independence Day to you. To the rest of the world, happy days to you. Um, I hope everything goes your way no matter where you are on Earth and uh, that you have uh, a great success in all of your marketing efforts. Until next time, take care.